Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee is now called to order. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. <coughs> Representatives Boyd, Grills. Here. Hall. Here. Hicks of Washington. Here. Howell. Here. Potts. Russell. Here. Towns. Chairman Whitson. Here. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, any personal orders before we get started? I would just like to thank my chairman and good buddy for covering for me last week. Uh, I felt we were in very good hands so I could take the opportunity to take care of some, uh, some personal business. And thank you, chairman. I, you, as always, you do a great job. I know we've gone over a lot of rules and stuff. Again, I just want to say uh, when we pass bills out of this committee, we will calendar them on the next available full transportation committee. And um, also, uh, we talked about when bills are due and amendments are due and stuff. And um, I just want to say we will not consider any amendment that did not have a corresponding fiscal memo uh, if there's a cost associated with it and such. So with that, uh, I just again want to thank everybody uh, and, and welcome the new members of this transportation subcommittee. Looking at it, I feel like we could almost field a football team, you know, with this, uh, with this group. So uh, I'm proud to serve with each and every one of you. And I, again, with the support staff too, I, I appreciate y'all. And we will look forward to a very productive session as we go forward. So with that, um, let's uh, go to item number one. Chairman Keesley, you are recognized on House Bill 402. Oh, thank you. We thank have you a motion chairman. and a second. Thank you, committee. I appreciate it's relative. Thank you. Uh, now, we do have, before we go further, uh, uh, this, this is relative to um, uh, ATVs, off-highway vehicles. But, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, direct your attention to, we do have an amendment, and that tracking code for you and the members is 4042. That's what I show, 4042. Do we have a motion and a second? Do we, Thank oh, you, sir. We have a motion and a second. We're now. Uh, do you want to explain the amendment? explanation of that? Is just it's 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 nothing more than a uh, than actually a, a tweak. We uh, and if I may, the amendment uh, makes only a technical uh, correction to the bill. Uh, frankly, the original bill referred to uh, subdivision B instead of subdivision A. That's all. That's all that. that okay. That is. Any questions? Now we are voting on to add uh, Amendment 4042 to the bill. All of those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. For, uh, amendment 4042 goes on the bill. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Explanation of the bill, actually it's, uh, it's a two-part. Uh, we, we first, it, it increases the weight limit uh, for ATVs, all-terrain vehicles from 2,500 to 3,500. Of course, that, that will be a, 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 a Joel, our attorney, that'd be a, a change in the code, I think, is, is the way that's going to read. And also, uh, there'll be a more a specific width. Uh, here, we're, we're stating that the width will be 80 inches, and that is specifically from the outside of the tire rim to outside, outside, outside. But with that, that's... Uh, that that's that sums it up, Mr. Chairman. And Thank I'll you. I'll entertain any questions for those. Thank you, Mr. Have. Chairman. Uh, do we have any questions for the sponsor? Seeing none, we are now going to vote on House Bill 402. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Ayes have it. House Bill 402 moves on to full transportation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it very much, committee. Thank you. Item number two on our agenda is uh, our good friend and representative, uh, Representative Johnny Garrett. You are recognized on House Bill 116. We have a motion and a second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee. I believe I do have an amendment. Do we have a motion and a second on the amendment? I show amendment 4090. That's right, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any questions or do you, would you like to explain the amendment? Sure, we referenced uh, uh, one statute that by mistake, so we're just re replacing that statute with the one that we meant to reference. So that's all that this amendment does. That's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> any, any questions from the committee? Okay, we have a question on the amendment. Okay, we're now voting to add the amendment 4090 to House Bill 116. All in favor say aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Ayes have it. The amendment goes on the bill. Please explain your bill, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm honored to bring this legislation before this committee for my first time. I don't believe I ever went in front of the Transportation Committee last year, the year before, so I'm honored to be here. Um, this legislation was actually brought to me by my legislative assistant, Courtney Kaufman, who is here in the, in the uh, in hearing room. She was paying attention to, believe it or not, the Georgia legislature, and they passed this bill. What this bill does was pushed by the Georgia's first lady, is that if you commit the act of uh, trafficking, you lose your commercial driver's license as long as you hold one for life. So that's what this bill does. If you commit the act of trafficking under our code, and you are found guilty, you will lose the ability to hold a commercial driver's license for life. So that is the bill. I'll be happy to take uh, any questions. Do we have any questions for the sponsor? Chairman Howe, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for bringing this bill. And just to clarify for the committee members who may not know, a lot of the trafficking is done by large truck, 18-wheeler trucks, and that's the reason for addressing the CDL. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Thank you for making okay. that clarification, Mr. Thank Chairman. you. I would also like to add, uh, when I first got elected, I spent uh, an evening with the TBI during a sting operation in, in Brentwood, Tennessee, one of the wealthiest cities in the state of Tennessee, and uh, uh, there was, I believe, 20 arrests for people thinking they were uh, involved in human trafficking, and uh, it is a problem in this state, and I think this bill goes a long way in helping that. Uh, Represent Towns, you're recognized. Mr. Chairman, I think it's a good bill as well. Now, it, is this being emulated across the country? If I'm, not, it really should be. I believe it's, I'm not sure if it's across the country, but I know several states are taking up legislation, obviously, because trafficking happens from state to state. Absolutely. And so anything we can do to minimize the impact or rip, a, rip away any way that someone could legally drive commercially uh, for their life if they commit this act Absolutely. certainly needs to be done across this country. Love to serve, uh, sign on the bill if you don't mind. I'll be glad to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Representative Towns. Any other questions before we vote? Okay, now we are voting on House Bill 116. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Moves on to full transportation. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Again, committee. Okay, we're now on item number three. Representative Smith, you are recognized on House Bill 486, ma'am. We have a motion and a second. Uh, do you have an amendment? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. I do have an amendment which does make the bill. It's drafting code 4111. That's what I show. We're now, uh, any, uh, you say it makes the bill. It okay. does make now the bill. We're now voting on uh, amendment 4111 for House Bill 486. We have a motion and a second. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Amendment number 4111 goes on House Bill 486. Ma'am, you are recognized. All right, thank you, Chairman and Committee. And I've spoken with many, if not most of you, over the course of the last week and then last year. Uh, this is not an unfamiliar topic. In uh, my district, there are six uh, rail crossings that at any given time, because there are um, uh, aspects of these called sightings, there could be one train passing, it will slow, it will stop. It will allow a second train to pass. And because in Hamilton County, in my district, it's contiguous with the um, uh, area that's under a lot of development right now, and we have the, the Volkswagen and the Amazon plant. And so we've, we've gone from having about 30 trains per day up to over 75 trains per day. And there are uh, e episodes of time where these, these uh, crossings uh, are blocked for in excess of 30 minutes at a time. And both of uh, the most highly reported complaining areas are, are adjacent to state highways. And the Federal Railroad Authority created a uh, website over the last 12, 12 months. Chairman Dan Howell brought this to my attention. It is a reporting mechanism. And any of you can go on there in your community if you're so uh, in, impacted. If you are law enforcement, more importantly, there is a portal in this same web, web portal that allows you to offer a complaint. Uh, in working with uh, Brian Carroll at TDOT, I want to thank them. Uh, in this bill, it asks for that web uh, complaint area to be posted on TDOT's website so that we can promote it back home in our districts just for the purpose of reporting block train crossings for observation. 
because what, what happens is TDOT does not take the lead on developing an overpass and or a grade unless it impacts a state road and or highway. And in the case of my district, it would be the city of Chattanooga and or the small municipality of Saudi Daisy. However, once they do engage, TDOT is, is a very wonderful partner and willing to offer assistance, but they need to be aware of the scale of the problem without having to undertake a costly study to observe. This just allows the, the public at large to be able to engage to, to go onto an existing website that our federal government has uh, put into authority and plus our tax dollars have paid for. We can catalog that. This bill asked the Department of uh, Transportation to use that information, gather it over a year's period of time, communicate it back to this committee and its leadership, as well as the corresponding committee in the Senate, as well as the top five municipalities that are impacted. And in talking to uh, Brian Carroll, he said that in the state of Tennessee, there are already municipalities that are beginning to use this website. And to their credit, this website is already posted on TDOT's web, web uh, page. So we're, we're getting there. So thank you. I'll stand, stand to answer questions. Okay. Uh, any questions for the sponsor? Representative Grills, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just, just out of curiosity, if you've got a disgruntled person in the community that's mad at the railroad or yeah. the, whoever it is, what, what's going to keep them from just going crazy and getting everybody riled up and, and having just a, you know, a plethora of uh, complaints that, that maybe they're not even valid. They're just mm -hmm. somebody trying to stir up something. Chair Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And it's, it's a valid question. It's one that the railroad uh, lobby folks have asked me and one that I'll answer just directly to you is that, you know, there's nothing that, pretend, that, that would uh, prevent someone from fraudulently doing that. However, these trains are very, they're monitored. Okay. And so it would, be, it would be very easy for uh, complaints to be confirmed as fraudulent, plus the fact that, I mean, I know on my phone, wherever it is, I have this bookmarked and I use it. I have offered complaints. I was late to a meeting just two weeks ago with uh, Treasurer David Lillard. They waited on me for 45 minutes because a, a, a school bus was trying to turn around and got stuck, and, and so I couldn't, I couldn't turn around. Uh, so there, there's nothing that would prevent a fraudulent report. However, because this has been in place, it's something that the Federal Rail Authority has put in place. Um, we, we can always petition our U.S. members of Congress and Senate to oversee this, but since there is, there, this is an ongoing problem, and we're having taxpayer roads blocked, I mean, one of these rail crossings is less than a thousand yards from a hospital in my district. And every, for, for two years now, for two and a half years, I've been petitioning the Department of Transportation wow. as well as the lobbying community for the rail authority. And they talk about advanced warning signaling, things like that. So we're just trying to draw attention by having a reporting mechanism and, and noting now that even without promotion of this, it's being used. I do think that we can have a very in, informed conversation about the scale of uh, this particular problem without devoting resources to it. And there is no fiscal note on this particular bill. Thank you, uh, Representative Grills. Uh, Representative Towns, you're recognized. Mr. Chairman, thank you again. The uh, bill obviously seems to make sense more than just a reporting mechanism. After we find out there's a real problem, what do we intend to do? What's going to happen? If you're right there by a hospital and your child or somebody's in the ambulance trying to get there and it's blocked for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, that's a problem for real. So what, what's the ultimate goal? What's the ultimate fix in your mind? Thank you, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Uh, that's what you all get to do as the Transportation Subcommittee and Committee. Mr. And Chairman, uh, <laughs> going back to you. <laughs> uh, the, there, there is nothing, there is no directive in this bill other than to use an existing resource so that we can examine data that is already available. Uh, I was rather impressed that uh, Mr. Carroll already has accessed that information and is able to view it now. And I think that he could have a conversation with you all, even as a, as a curious uh, member of this uh, body, and talk to you about what the scale of the problem is now, even before we promote that. But, th but to answer your question uh, specifically, colleague, I would simply say I think that we would have to listen to, um, you know, look at the problem and make a decision and, and hope that there would be uh, answers. Thank you. Uh, Representative Towns also, um, 
a lot of it deals with city planning too to be sure you build on the right side of the the correct side of the railroad but also you know we encounter this and i'd like to commend tdot working with cities when they bring projects forward at yeah, and to determine the scale and scope and the cost of those projects. Next up, Thank I have uh, Chairman Howe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to commend Representative Smith for her diligence uh, in attacking this problem and what she's doing is responding to her constituents. Uh, and I think probably Chattanooga area is one of the hottest spots in Tennessee for, for this issue. And uh, we've had many conversations about this and uh, there's no magic bullet, but I think one key component of this bill is the reporting mechanism that will in turn not only be shared with TDOT and the committee, but with the municipalities or the, the, the county governments uh, so that they can see with future planning that we, have to, we now have to take this into consideration, which they've not done in the past. So I think this is a good bill. I'm glad to support it. Thank you. If, if yes, I might, Mr. Yes, Chairman, sir. and I want to thank all of you all, and, and the point that I, I think that the chair, subcommittee chairman and the full chair has made, um, there is an element, too, that, that our uh, planning authorities have to lean into understanding that uh, all growth is good in some capacity, but it's painful if you don't plan for it. And, and I think that, that growth can be very painful if, if things just turn into a rubber stamp. And I think this is this adds just one more piece of data in the pathway. So again, thank you for committee for your thoughtful questions and I renew my motion, sir. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, question's been called. We're now voting on uh, House Bill 46. Um, I was gonna compliment you, but okay. All in favor of the bill, <laughs> all in favor of the bill say aye. aye. Opposed? House Bill 486 moves to full, uh, full transportation. I will say my compliments till then. Okay. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. Okay. It's too quick. Okay, House Bill 4 by Representative Cheryl. It was reported to me that that's going to be rolled one. Uh, House Bill 848, item number four. Thank you. That's why I keep the attorney close by. Um, uh, item number five, House Bill 596 by Representative Clements has been rolled one week. That brings us up to House Bill 364, item number six by Representative Russell. Motion second. 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 We have a motion and a second. You recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, committee. I'm uh, currently working with the Department of Safety to uh, clarify some concerns that they have. And basically what this bill will do is is require the Department of Safety to uh, give the representative and senator in the jurisdiction that uh, uh, traffic fatalities occur a copy of the fatality report so we can keep up with our districts and make our districts safer and maybe have a, an extra set of eyes on these roads and these traffic fatalities so we may be able to correct things as they go. But I'd like to request this be rolled one week. Yes, uh, approved. Rolled one week. Uh, that completes our calendar. Cal oh, Representative Towns, you're recognized. Yes. Uh, I'll refer to our attorney. Your role is just as good as his role, so there's no differentiation in the roles. So how? Uh, it, if you ask for a role, <laughs> okay. do I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> We're adjourned. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs>